Well, I'm sitting here. I've just been sitting here. I have notes, but I found myself reluctant to start. I don't really know why, so sometimes you just got to press the button and let it go, and wherever it goes is where it goes, you know? I feel like, I feel very similar to how I felt with my Eminem review, album review. Only it's almost the opposite side of the coin, because I wasn't really into that album, I'm not a huge fan of Eminem, and it felt pointless to review that album, because the people who love Eminem are going to love that album, and the people who hate Eminem are going to hate that album, and that's about it. <clears throat> and I feel somewhat similar about this. JPEG Mafia is uh, not a massive star. It's got two million listeners on Spotify. Actually, two and a half, I think. It's creeped up a little bit. Uh, I think he makes incredible music. There are some other people that agree with that opinion, and there are a lot of people who don't agree with that opinion. <laughs> and I feel like this album takes that and just reinforces the whole bit across the board. You know, I, one of the notes I wrote down is how you know, all of us need to take a handful of member berries or Pepperidge Farms if you prefer that. But, you know, let's do a little membrane. Because remember last year, Scaring the Host, big album, did really well. Him and Danny Brown. Incredible, just incredible album. Incredible production, incredible beats. But what did you see a lot about that album? Oh, the mix is bad. And so what a lot of us say in response to that, no, the mix isn't bad. The mix is set to a specific way. It's intentional. Yeah, but I don't like it. Okay. Okay. That's fine. And I feel like this album, this is one of the things I like about it so much, is it reignites that whole conundrum of what is good versus something that people actually like. You know? Excellence versus appeal. In that divide. Because that is a real thing. There are things that are good that people don't like, and there are things that aren't that great that a lot of people love. And I won't name any names or any artists. I'll just say something as simple as fast food, okay? Fast food essentially locks in that idea. Although I suppose that's a little different because you have to eat. You don't have to listen to music, but you do have to eat. <clears throat> what I love about this album, especially if you toss in the old member berries and scaring the hose and the mix is bad, the mix is not bad on this. When I listen to It's Dark and Hell is Hot, every time I put that on, I go, God, the sound is just so crisp and clean and just precisely placed and so well executed. That track sounds incredible. It sounds incredible. Now, if you don't like the beat, okay. If you don't like the lyrics, okay, that's fine. But those are two different things. The enjoyment of it is very, very different from what's being executed. For me, luckily, no surprise for anybody watching this, of course I love this album. I was cracking up the other day. I, I popped on and watched a little bit of Kevin and Connor's reaction to it, and there was a comment fairly high up that said, Peggy really did make an album for Bob. <laughs> like, fucking A. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I was so happy to hear this, top to bottom. But what I really love about it, really, really love about it, is it's not strictly a metal hip-hop album. I think the final four tracks are critical to this album. I think they're critical to JPEG Mafia in terms of an artist and reinforcing the strength of his discography such that it's getting to a point where people aren't going to be able to ignore it or deny it anymore, in my opinion. They're still going to not like it, those of them that don't like it. But basically, you can't dismiss it. You can't. Uh, these final four tracks, either on or off the drugs, I mean, honestly, like Song of the Year? Like, seriously, one of the best fucking songs. That sample and the way it's cut and loose, oh my god. It just sounds so amazing. And it's so clean. And the strings that roll, like it's just unbelievable how good that song is. My only complaint about that song is it's short. I could listen to that song for another 45 seconds or so easily. easily. I mean, of course I would still spam loop it, but I do feel like, oh, it's over already when I listen to it. Incredible song. 
It's Dark and Hell's Hot, another favorite of mine. Uh, you know, Ex Military is another song. I just got done listening to it again because I was like, am I remembering this correctly? And yeah, if you listen to the production, I even went on Wikipedia and Genius again to look at the, you know, the credits for production. It's just JPEG Mafia. Listen to that song and keep in mind one person put all this together and listen to the production and how it evolves over the course of five minutes. It's incredible. It's incredible. So, <clears throat> you know, I can understand why people, <laughs> they don't like JPEG Mafia. I, I was bouncing around a little bit online, you know, just kind of lurking and looking at comments and stuff like that. And if I had any criticism for this album, I would say overall, in general, it's like, I feel like, we, I as a listener am ready for Peggy to, to kind of move on and get over this whole hating on the haters thing. That's been going on for a while. It's not a huge deal, but after a while it's like, yeah, I know. I know you've got all these haters and, and you're going to just shit all over them and you don't care. Like, I know. I know. And that's another reason why I like the final four tracks off this, off this album. Because it breaks away from that. I feel like if it was just nine, ten tracks of metal hip hop, people can just go, ah, oh, no, you know, it's just garbage, whatever. No, no. With those additional songs, especially don't put anything on the Bible. Oh man, <laughs> that one's great. I recovered from this. It's just fantastic. It's fantastic. And the conundrum just remains. You know, I, I listen to this music. I obviously will love it for, for what it is. And I can imagine anybody who considers themselves even partially a hip hop purist listening to it and not not enjoying it, not wanting to acknowledge it, that kind of a thing. But it does beg the question, I mean, isn't hip hop and the idea of hip hop evolution and change and innovation and progressing forward and being on that bleeding edge and bringing in something new or something no one's ever heard before? JPEG Mafia is that, in my opinion, especially when it comes to production. That guy is just way out in front of everybody else. I feel like it's one of those things where people don't even, they don't get it. They just, they just straight up don't get it. Like, like they won't get it until a couple years from now. Uh, I always think about uh, Led Zeppelin and I mean Led Zeppelin's classic, classic, classic rock band. <clears throat> and you know, by the time of their fourth album, they weren't even getting reviews. They were getting like single paragraph reviews for their album because Everyone just thought it was noise and nonsense and ridiculous because nobody understood what the hell they were doing. And one of my favorite interviews I've seen, uh, the lead singer for Tool, he's involved with other projects as well. And uh, he's just got this bit about how, you know, sometimes it takes people a while to catch on. It takes people a while to finally understand what it is that you're doing. And then when they finally start to understand, then they start to come around and then they start to listen and then they start to actually enjoy it. With something like this, I can see the barrier. Like if, if, you're, if you're strictly coming from the hip hop lane, it's hard to sit down to, I scream this in the mirror before I interact with anyone, which I, I think that's a phenomenal song. <laughs> like if you're walking in, like what was it? Uh, I'm Dante. I, I saw the little clip of him. I, I didn't watch the whole reaction, but I saw a clip of him where he was essentially listening to JPEG Mafia for the first time. And he like, you know, the guitar drops in. It's all loud and crazy. And he pauses it. He's all, I thought you guys, is, I thought you guys said he was a rapper. <laughs> it's like, like what the hell is this? What the hell is this? It has so much of that. I mean, JPEG Mafia, he really, what I appreciate about him the most, and I say this all the time, I'll say it again, is he's just very much focused on doing his own thing. And I hope that continues. It'll be interesting to see how, how his career progresses, what he does musically, what he does lyrically as he goes forward, you know, how much the, the question is always, how much does it bother someone to put forth excellent, high quality work, art, whatever, and then have it continuously disregarded? And how much does that wear on a person? And how much does that alter the direction they go in? You know, who knows? Who knows? But I Lay Down My Life For You is a fantastic album. 
Uh, I've been saying for a good chunk of this summer, Dark Times is still my favorite album of the year. We're going to see what happens uh, when it comes to the end of the year and we're starting to go through, you know, all of us are going through our album of the year rankings because this one's up there. <laughs> this was This was everything I was hoping for and then just more especially the last four track run like that was really the more like oh my god cool we're not going to be a one-dimensional experience through this we're going to have some openness some vulnerability some softness to it too it's phenomenal and you know the features vent stables denzel curry both great did a good job on that yeah i don't know it's fun it's just fun like I think another reason why I hesitated when I was just sitting here before I turned the camera on and started recording, so just sitting here thinking of what am I going to say, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Either you're going to enjoy it or you're not. You're going to bitch about it or you're not. Whatever. And the nice thing about all of this is, like, yes, it's fun to discuss it. Some people enjoy arguing. I'm a little less interested in that. But when it comes down to it, if I want to listen to it, I can, and if I don't, I won't. And it, it's, it really is all that easy. All so easy. God, and like Jihad Joe, fucking, that, that halfway point of the song where the guitar drops in, and like the, the air raid sirens are going off, like, oh my God, this is just so metal. I love it, I love it. The drums, the drums that are banging around in this album, the strings, oh, it just, you go from, oh, that was another thing. That was a note I had. I actually did want to touch on this. Love the track order, too. I love that it's just banger, 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 banger. And then you get into the middle, and it's still loud. It's still aggressive. But you start to get like a, a, a transition sound, in a sense. It starts to let off a little bit and introduce some new elements and sound. And then you shift over into either on or off the drugs, and you chill out. And you get introspective and reflective and a little little vulnerable, and then you close it out. And I, I love that the album concludes with, all right, that's it. I'm done. I'm finally finished with it. I've been working on this for too long. I'm done. <laughs> and the reason why I like that so much is because it's nice to hear somebody acknowledge their own effort and, and kind of almost hear them go, oh, whew. all right, you know? Because I can't imagine making something like this, this well, is even remotely easy. And so I like that we get this element of, I'm not even going to pretend that it's easy. This was actually pretty hard for me. This actually took a lot of effort. It, you know, it's eight months late because he said this was going to come out last year, right? Worth the wait, Peggy. Worth the wait. Okay, that's it. Uh, oh, I'm wearing my shirt. This is my killer jam. I mention that because I'm going to go to the live show in Hollywood in two weeks, August 23rd. I'll be in Hollywood. I'm going to get down there around lunchtime, kick around Hollywood, go to the show. If you see a person walking around with a bald head like this and a bearded face like this and a t-shirt like this, that's probably me. And if you're interested in saying hello, you are officially invited to come say hello. Uh, and if you don't want to, that's also acceptable. Although I will find you in force. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anybody out there who's going to the Peggy Show in, in Hollywood, uh, end of the month here, hope to see you. And uh, yeah, y'all take it easy. We'll see you soon.